So how you guys doing? What you guys been up to? A whole lot of nothing, man. Not a whole lot. About the same as you, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, dude. It's been terrible. Getting ready to rock and roll, Clue? Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Back, Wash Up Walk On fans, episode 103 of the podcast. And today we're branching out to uh, a different, maybe, uh, genre of sport. <clears throat> Is it 102? It's 103. I think it's 102. Is 103? It 103? It's 103. Yeah, because Kevin, you weren't there for when we did the little lunch hour podcast. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah. So, Not fall, Drake. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah we're, we're jumping from our branch to another branch of Hawkeye Sports and bringing in. Uh, a guy that is said to be an absolute legend. Uh, haven't had the pleasure to meet in person, but looking forward to having a, a good conversation here and learning a little bit about the Hawkeye basketball program and everything that uh, all the successes that they had here. So, without any further ado, welcome Ryan Kreiner to the podcast. What's so up, guys? How are you? Uh, how are you handling this little uh, quarantine self isolation deal? Man, it's been rough. Uh, uh, I think all the local gyms and, you know, back home in Spirit Lake have been locked down, so I can't really go in there and do anything. Uh, I know all the facilities back in Iowa are shut down. Uh, no athletes or staff are even allowed inside, like Carver. I don't know about the football facilities. Same. Uh, so I, yeah, same. I believe <laughs> it's the same, yeah. I've been working out at home, kind of running trails. Uh, kind of some hills work to stay in shape. Um, yeah, it's been it's definitely been weird. I mean, almost everything is shut down. And I'm sure that's just how it has been for everybody. Yeah, the uh, this whole thing has caused just a a stop in the world, really. And um, our favorite, I mean, everybody's favorite time of year, March Madness, got completely nixed because of this. We're gonna get to how this affects you and how this affected the Hawks this year, but I want to throw it back a little bit. And, uh, and kind of bring us and the listeners up to speed on who Ryan Kreiner is, mm-hmm. how, he, how you became a Hawkeye, how you mm-hmm. kind of made your way to Iowa City. Tell us a little bit about that story. Um, well, I was born and raised in New Hampton, Iowa. Uh, really small, like farming town. Um, played, you know, sports and stuff as long as I can remember. I had a ball in my hand since I was about the age of three. Uh, I think first grade was my first like, real basketball practice. Fell in love with it. Uh, my dad had played at Mankato State in Minnesota, uh, so you know he, you know he had a, obviously a big love for basketball. He passed that down to me. Um, just you know, fell in love with it. Played played a lot. Eventually, ended up moving to Spirit Lake. Um, had a good little run here with uh, those two really good teams, and. Uh, Kind of blew up on the AAU circuit my junior year and ended up getting um, an offer from Fran. A uh, funny story is the first time that he actually came to watch me in high school, he was, he was uh, going to offer me my junior year, and I had the worst game of my career, like terrible. I was like triple teamed the whole game. I had like eight points, some turnovers. It was just ter- it was a terrible high school game. And um, co- I, I was uh, you know kind of down in the dumps about that because I thought, I was kind of expecting to get offered, and it didn't come. And uh, Coach Brooks stuck with me, and I was always my dream school. And so when he came came calling with an offer, I, I had to take it. That's, that's so really I'm kind of curious. Like, I know uh, basketball is big recruiting into, like, the AAU stuff. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because, like, obviously football, like, we have yeah, no, yeah. no idea, like, how that all works. <laughs> so basketball is huge with AAU just because the competition, the, you know, competition is way better 
on the circuit, especially if you're in a national circuit. So Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour. And then there's also some national AAU events that are good competition, like NYLA. And so I played for one year with the Barnstormers, uh, left that, and I went and teamed up with Jordan Bohannon and Cordell Pemsel over at Martin Brothers for my uh, last year of AAU. Um, and, you know, we had a really good squad, won AAU Nationals. Uh, so I think in AAU, I was doing it, they had five what they called live events. And the live events are the huge, like, like five-day tournaments where all the coaches come and watch. Um, you know, they're spread out throughout the country. Coaches are flying coast to coast, recruiting guys that are on their list. Um, so, yeah, that, you know, there's five of those weekends, three in the – I mean, two in the spring, three in July. And that's just, uh, you know, that's, that's the time where you can really, you know, increase your stock and become, you know, a, a hot commodity and pick up a lot of offers. Um, I, when I picked up my first offer, it was actually at, like, a team camp at South Dakota State, and I got the first offer, tweeted it out, and within, like, the end of the week, I had eight more offers just like, just like that. Damn. Yeah, it's That's funny crazy. how it works. You get one and the rest come calling yeah. in, huh? We wouldn't know, but. We wouldn't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, uh, so, the I've, so I've heard. Yeah, the, <laughs> I was, yeah, that's funny. Um, funny story. Yours truly, 5'10", white long snapper from Marshalltown. I played in several NY2LA tournaments. Okay, nice. Who'd you play with? Uh, so. How old are you? I mean, I just, I am turning 22 in like a month. 22. So you probably wouldn't have heard of us. I didn't play with a, an organization, but um, in my in our grade, we played um, as the Iowa Storm, and we're from Des Moines. And I probably played with – I mean, we played with Pete all the time. Um, yeah. Pete played with us several times uh, in, in a couple tournaments that when we needed an extra guy. Um, yeah. He played for Kingdom, obviously. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I probably played with the best 10 white guys you could ever put together. Um, <laughs> one of the kids from Waukee, his dad was our coach. Uh-huh. And we, we just ran five out, and eight uh-huh. out of 10 of our players could just absolutely rain from three. I was, uh-huh. one, of, I was one of the guys who could not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we just ran we just ran set plays where we would just I mean you know how it is in on the yeah. AAU circuit there's a ton of just they're not people aren't disciplined people are no. just just there to street ball a lot a uh-huh. lot of guys are trying to improve their stock yeah. play play for themselves get their, get their numbers get their offer and get out exactly and so we would play as like this lockdown team we played great defense full court press all game yeah. We're rotating in guys every two minutes to keep fresh, and we would just rain threes. And we actually, I think, uh, our best year in like eighth or ninth grade, we played we played to uh, like six in the country um, at the nationals. Um, and so, clue, what was your contribution to this team? And you, I, uh... That's a great question, Kevin. Um, <laughs> so I sat on the bench. Big time energy guy. A lot. Um, huge. <laughs> you were energy. waving the towel on the side. On oh the yeah. Uh, huge, yeah. Huge energy guy. So um, the reason I was on the team was because Gimble, who you two know, was one of the guys who could rain threes, and we played the Storm as the Marshalltown Bobcats at a tournament somewhere, and Gimble went off for like twenty or thirty points. We still got crushed, but the coach wanted Gimble on the team. And Gimble wasn't going to be on the team unless I was on the team because my dad was our AAU coach. And so I came as a package deal with Gimble, but I played insane defense. I was a hell of a presser and uh, best shit talker on the team. I had to learn how to do something. So, oh, yeah, no, you, uh, so follow up question to that Kluver is why was there no, why was there no color on your team, bro? There's no flavor. I know. Like segregation ended a long time ago. Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. We, we weren't racist, I promise. Um, <laughs> so I'll just I'll run down the guy. I mean, you guys wouldn't know any of them. We don't need to run down the guys. I just need an answer to why to why there was no flavor at all. I'll, I'll be honest because uh, you guys just not know a black or Mexican kid. No. Okay. Well, first of all, how many Mexicans do you know that are that are like Jared crazy? loves basketball. I mean, okay, so Pete, Jared's also like five seven, dude. Come on. Yeah, he's like five eleven. <laughs> um, Pete was the only dude in Des Moines. There's a couple other guys, and he was already on a team. 
Like you don't just find a bunch of like Zion Williamson's in the middle of Des Moines. Right. And so, so Ryan, I'm just kind of curious, how do these AAU teams like come together? You just kind of the coaches just kind of cherry pick guys from high school teams and say, Hey, let's, uh, well, the, the biggest way you can like cherry pick guys is there's national teams and there's regional teams. And so when a national team will play like a local event, when it's not a live event, um, like they're obviously going to win the whole tournament, but on their way of playing that, like their coach will like maybe see someone and that they really like and stuff. And that's kind of how I got picked up. I played on a regional, it was called North Iowa fire. Uh, and I was kind of like a focal point of that team play, uh, playing really well got picked up <clears throat> from like a team just to go to like one live event in Indianapolis. And then I got an invite to go and try out for the Barnstormers, you know, made that team, had a good little run with them. And I decided I was going to leave and go play uh, Martin Brothers. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, like you said, you can like, they really cherry pick the regional guys. Sometimes the like the national team guys are a little bit more, you know, team loyalty, kind of like I'm going to stay with my guys and, um, obviously, like there's also tryouts and workouts as well that you can get invited to from like high school or just different connections. Yeah, we gotcha. used to we used to play the Barnstormers all the time. Uh, Jeremy Morgan, Drake, you know mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one time we played Marcus Page and Adam Woodbury's team. We played up a grade. Was that like Iowa All Stars or something? Yeah, There's and uh, we, Page Woodbury. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Gisell. We played. We played that whole squad, and it was a uh, for some reason we played. It was like a quarter game or four quarter game. Um, and a couple of our guys went off in the first quarter. We were up like 26, 18 mm. and they've never tried harder in their life for the rest of the game. Oh, oh um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mar Marcus Page and, and Adam Woodbury mm. just took it to it. Guess who guarded Woodbury, by the way? <laughs> How? This guy. Because I was this strong. I was, dude, I, you know, I was, I was this size. I was bigger than this in high school. So like that was the only, yeah, it's, it's funny how, you would never suspect, yeah. but I know the whole circuit. Um, I'm, I'm interested, Ryan, uh, who was like a real competition when you, like when you were making that decision, was it, was it Iowa all the way once you got that or was there like a decision to be made? Well, I was actually getting ready to just kind of move on from Iowa just because it was kind of like so strung out. Um, my top five when I was about ready to decide was Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Clemson and Wichita state. Damn. So I, I was really, really close to going to Minnesota. Wow. This time, my mom's family's from Minneapolis. I mean, I live three hours from Minneapolis. I'm five hours from Iowa City. Uh, yeah, I was really close. That's wild. Could have been a goofer. What was, uh, what was the final deciding factor? Just kind of boy. I mean, my family's always been Hawkeye fans. It'd be, it'd be weird to go put on, you know, maroon or, you know, play for the Huskers. That'd just be weird. Yeah, I mean, if you were my child, you wouldn't be welcome back at Thanksgiving, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. So, uh, What kind of a coach's friend to play for? He yeah. seems like he's just a guy that has your back to the mat. Oh, yeah, to, definitely to the max. Like, people say he gets heated when, they, when he jumps refs and stuff. I mean, that's just because he doesn't think he's getting, a, like, a fair shake for us. He just wants us to, you know, have every opportunity to, you know, go out and do what we can. And, um, like, I, I think the biggest example of this is – when Woodbury was getting attacked uh, by like the national media because he like poked two guys in the eye or something. <laughs> he, I mean, he was he was a little bit of a notorious <laughs> eye poker man. I mean, they were saying he, he was a serial eye poker, and you know, they were, like, <laughs> and they were talking all the trash about him, and you know, he like he went on he had, like on national media and just ripped him. Like like that's his guy. If you're like you're one of fans guys, he's always gonna have you. That's dope. That's awesome. So I want to talk about kind of going along with that. It's like. The end of the Illinois game when they're in Carver, things got a little bit jolly between the coaches, and he's just like, "Fuck it, you know what? We're not shaking these people's hands." <laughs> what was that like after the game? I mean, so that's weird, but like every single year we've had at least one no handshake. <laughs> uh, so I mean, at, at that point, when coach when coach goes like this and says, "Get to the locker room," I'm I'm pulling everybody off the court. I'm like, "All right, if coach says get out of here, we're getting out of here." It was actually funny because. The funny thing about that is I was on the court and like, I see like Io, he's like kind of like throwing punches almost at Connor, but he was like trying to get the ball, but like they were down by 11 or whatever. So it didn't really make sense. Uh, so like the ref isn't calling anything. Stuff's getting chippy. Uh, and I go up to ref. I was like, yo, you gotta call that. Otherwise like something's gonna like get out of hand next time. And he, and he gets in my face and he's like, shut up. I'll throw your ass out next game. Like I have, I was like, wow, dude, like the game's over. <laughs> it, was just, it was wild. 
That's crazy. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, you are known as, and your Twitter name is the big cat. Yes, where did sir. that, where did that come from? Like what's, is there a story or you're just, you're just the goddamn big cat around town? <laughs> So my dad claims that it's him, that he's the original big cat, but I've never heard anyone call him that. So, <laughs> so I mean, the story is, it, it was kind of like, like when Snapchat first came out, like all my friends were like, oh, like make it this, make it that, make it that. So then it was, a, it was originally just cream cat and then it just kind of morphed into big cat. <laughs> how, how tall are you? I'm 6'10", 255. Oh, What's shit. the air like up there, dude? <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's a little thinner up here, up here in the clouds. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the tallest guest we've ever had. I'm pretty sure you are. Yeah. Uh, record books. Gotta be. Right, yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> Write it down. Till we get. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of funny, man, because it's like, you can't change your Snapchat name. So nope. like, like that, that shit was that. That's a seventh grade name forever. <laughs> exactly. Forever. You got so, you, you started adding these people who's like, what the hell is this yeah, exactly. thinking? <laughs> so many people like like my age because like we're all in like middle school you know you know how people are in middle school so many people like my age who's have the weirdest like snapchat names yeah oh, it's, yeah. it's the weirdest time of your life it's like when we made email accounts and it was like oh yeah oh yeah could you yeah could you imagine like uh having to like give out your uh aol instant messaging thing? <laughs> <laughs> today like as a professional <laughs> exactly <laughs> Hey, my, uh, here's my business card. My email is tylerkluver at live.com. And my MSN, if you'd like to MSN me, is superbasketballfan96107. Um, was that actually what it was? You could hear, no, I didn't have MSN, dude. I wasn't, I was, oh. I wasn't on that shit. So um, that was your joke? That was your punchline right there? <laughs> dude, fuck you. <laughs> all right on with the podcast uh how uh, joe Wieskamp, that's my guy uh -huh. so, can i can i hear a little bit of of talk about joe Wieskamp because i don't get to see it and i wish mm -hmm. i could be in there watching you guys grind it out yeah i mean joe i mean he's an absolute silent assassin like if you, if you let him get going you're, you're in trouble uh i mean he, he's a he's got a very calm uh demeanor like he'll he can not like 25 on your name he might say three words to you. Uh, he's not a guy that's going to talk to you. He's just kind of going to do it and look at you like, come on now. That's hilarious. Got it. Um, the, only, the only thing I got to say about Joe, is he, he's putting in a whole bunch of work, but every time he's in Carver, he's playing country tunes, and I can't, I can't get down with, with that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Romantic you, songs, I'm just like, no way. Yeah. Who, who do you need to bump to before a game? Uh... I don't know, probably just whatever's hot. Like when baby when baby came out, um, like when Life is Good came out, just like whatever's hot. Do you guys uh, listen to music as uh as a locker room or y'all listen like individually in your own like headphones? Yeah, so like so like like usually it's just individually, but we have an aux cord in the locker room and just blares for the whole locker room. So yeah. usually like Joe Tucson will go and play like some New York shit. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's ever heard. Yeah, of course. Some underground shit. <laughs> so, so he's I was, he's blaring that, and then otherwise everyone just got their AirPods or whatever. I was always butt hurt that we couldn't play music in the locker room, dude. I thought that would really. Be. Yeah, so our locker room's dead silent. No one says. If, a if you don't have your headphones on, yeah, you do, it's it, you can hear a mouse take a fart. <laughs> oh, that's wild. <laughs> It's pretty serious. It's it's like pretty serious. It's, it's it was pretty crazy. I kind of uh, liked it. Like before a game, we'll have like like Jack McCaffrey. He'll be like running Fortnite duos on the on the flat screen. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm weak. Speaking of so Fortnite, like if you guys like if you guys got like a dub right before you went out there, everyone was all hyped up. Oh yeah, it, it, auto, automatic win. That's so live. <laughs> auto. <laughs> Jaybo is Jaybo is like kind of notorious. He he started up the Twitch channel. Uh. uh you 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 and him grind on the Fortnite a little bit. Uh, we used to when I when I was playing, but I mean, he's been my roommate for four years. I've I've definitely heard a bunch of his rages. Just, just I, I've, I mean, he'll just be playing. The house will be dead silent. You just hear him explode. It's so funny. So he's like a third. He's like a true thirteen-year-old on Modern Warfare. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly, That's exactly. Um, he this until like like. 3.30 a.m. because his mom can't come tell him to be quiet and go to bed. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, what's the dirt on J-Bo? Does, like, does he, like, eat, like, some weird cereal for breakfast every morning, like, leave his laundry out, never does the dishes? Oh, never does the dishes. Never? 
No, he's, he's like he's like one of the healthiest eaters I've ever seen, but he will not he will not do his dishes until there's a mountain. Huh. Nah, seems like huh. Le- seems like only huh. only stuff for legends. Yeah. <laughs> huh. That's uh, the worst before. roommate tendency of all time. We we've never we've never had a an issue just because like we're such good friends. But that that's the one thing I can say is that dude does not do his dishes until there's a mountain. All right. Well, that's good to know. There's a uh, time or two, Clue, that I want to take one of your dirty ass steak knives and stick you in the throat with it. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin and I were roommates, and I, 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 I abide by the same rules. Like you let him get to a certain point where you really need a full set of clean dishes, and then you do them all at once. And no, Kevin, Kluver, you would let him amass until there's no dishes left. Then you'd go make your food, and you take whatever you needed out of the sink and just wash that. You wouldn't watch the whole pile. That works too if you need to do that. I mean, who knows? As you need. All right. Um, early in your career, Ryan, I want to hear like the early years because now you're you're later on, and we're gonna get to the whole senior year being cut short. But um, I want to hear like the early struggles, like how it was, like a welcome to the Big Ten moment, some of mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, what What do you remember from like the early years in Iowa City? Like. Started just like running fives like right away in the summer. You, know, you could tell that like, you know, this was not high school anymore. Yeah. Uh, people were just getting dunked on. It was on film. You're probably gonna get clowned on on Snapchat later or something. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. That's that's funny. In, in football, it's it's different because like I don't know what's it what's the equivalent of getting dunked on in football like getting mossed. Ooh. Like having no, getting lost, oh, getting like no, blown I, the fuck up. When you get blown up, because that that's gonna be on some highlight tapes. Y'all remember when uh, when Desmond hit D Mitch? You guys don't remember that? Oh shit, I do now. I do now. Like yeah, it was yeah. it was it was a little bit of a cheap shot, and D Mitch wasn't happy about it. I know from a defensive guy, you're gonna say that Drake's probably on the other side, but like. Desmond I know D. Mitch wasn't happy about it. It was like a screen pass, and Desmond sniffed it out and absolutely smacked the fuck out of him. I remember yeah. it now. It was yeah. like a screen ball, yeah. Like, I, D. Mitch why do over. real fights never break out on basketball courts, bro? Like, I've seen some basketball fights that kind of get escalated, but really it's just skirmishes going in one direction really fast. Like, there's no malice at the action and besides that one. Like, why do basketball fights never actually get to fights? I mean, I mean, football doesn't exactly either, but all right. yeah, I mean, but we got helmets on, we got pads on, all that. If we're gonna be honest, like, like if we start scrapping, like we're going bare knuckle bra, bra, yes. you're probably gonna have you know broke nose. Like you guys, you guys got helmets, you just like push each other. Yeah, but like when you get super pissed, like I've never thought like, oh, don't throw a punch when I'm super pissed. Oh, Drink, I mean, a like, little we, different. We definitely like fought in practice. Like if we had like real fights, like scraps in practice, but. Nothing like during the game because I feel like, and I feel yeah, like you're, you're like, fucking your team like, over and during the game if you do that. Yeah, I mean, like you guys are gonna get like a 15 yard penalty or whatever, and it's probably gonna be offsetting because there's gonna be multiple of them. And but like like our consequences, like one, you're like you're obviously teed. Two, you're gonna get tossed. Three, you're probably gonna be out for like a certain amount of games. Yeah, it's and on top of that, like you're gonna give them probably four to six points depending on what just happened from your like technical free throws and they get the ball. It's, it's a huge, huge, like, shift in the game. It's different. Yeah. Right. And, Drake don't, like, Drake, don't pretend like football players, like, get in fights, like, every no, game. No, 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 like, no, no. I'm just saying, like, you see so – in basketball games so many times, like, dudes one-on-one, like, shoving each other back and forth, still getting technicals and everything, mm-hmm. but they never actually get in fights. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah. – well, you, you want some Kansas, Kansas State stuff? Yeah, I, I want some real fights, man. I want, I want basketball to, to get some hockey-style rules, and you just, don't you listen. know. I, 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 can't remember, I can't remember. Give a penalty box. Yeah, exactly. Dude, you got to go to the locker room for a quarter, but <laughs> you got to fucking cool quarter. down, period. You get a, you get a, a popsicle, and your mom oh, yeah. comes and rubs your shoulders, and then you go back and you calm down. Uh, should there be power plays too? You know, five on four, five on three. <laughs> That'd be horrible. That um, gets a little greedy. <laughs> uh, Ryan, what's a what's a favorite moment in Carver? Like the like, how how did that first dunk feel? How did you know like something that sticks out in your brain? Oh yeah, like like you just said, like first dunk of my career. I think it was like 
it's, it's probably Ohio State my freshman year. Like, I didn't play a whole lot my freshman year. And my senior year, like, I, I had a lot of dunks. Like, I was a big kid, high major D1 athlete, playing against some farm boys. Like, I was throwing, throwing it down. And so, like, we get to the Big Ten, I am just not, like, that athletic compared to anyone else. Like, it's hard to, like, dunk the ball, not playing a lot. It's so, like, my first dunk was probably Ohio State. And, like, I don't know, it's just, like, and that felt good. Um, definitely, I think, like, every time we beat Iowa State, because that's a huge rivalry. Yep. Um, and then when we beat – Michigan my junior year and there's a huge court storm that was awesome mm-hmm. those, are, those are probably my top moments in Carver that's awesome uh yeah we beat Michigan our junior year so did. we did junior. yeah there's 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 a little bit of a rushing in the there's field field, there field storming there as well mm-hmm. uh, it's a common thing uh, we know exactly where you're coming from yeah like uh man I so there was one time back in the day again when I got to play at Carver empty empty seating no one was there but it was like the championship of like an iowa city tournament uh-huh. they, they introduced the starting lineup to like the the bulls theme song oh yeah it's sick na, 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 you know the and yeah. it, when we played like, in the united center they did that yeah same yeah, yeah. same kind of thing yeah and uh um, except you guys actually had fans yeah hoover yeah. would have <laughs> never played a basketball game. but i hit a couple three balls in that game in carver and it was just like a special feeling obviously as a kid mm-hmm. but like Talk about like, you know, someone someone gets you the ball and you just step into it, flush, just in motion. Like, what kind of feeling is that? Like, that's got to feel so good. Yeah, no, no, it's awesome. Especially like, like when you, I don't know, like all all shooters know like when you let it go, like they know when it's going in. Especially like when like you know it's going in. Like I think one super memorable one was this year. We were playing Rutgers and I, we might be like down by a couple points. I just checked into the game. I'm I'm in the game for no more than 15 seconds, and we're in transition. I come down and just smack a three right away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, going nuts in the house, yes. dude. I was going yeah. nuts. <laughs> like, like, like that's another great feeling. Like, like you smack a three, and I call timeout, and everyone's getting teed on the court. Like that's the best, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear. So, no, you go. Carver. I want to ask a question. Carver ice cream. Do you guys get ice cream after wins? Do you guys not get to? Oh, all right. Do you got. Not not after wins because they're usually uh, closed up shop, but I do attend some women's sporting events strictly for the Carver Cone. Nice, Carver Cone. Nice, big respect to it. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Uh, that's very chocolate twist. Have to get the twist. Have yeah. to, my man. Um, is your guy J Bo gonna break that three point record? Yeah, I, I think he's eighty off in the Big Ten record. So, I think like, his first three years, like his first year, I think he might have hit eighty eight. Like that, like that's his lowest total. So I mean, if he comes back healthy and like, I I could see him getting like 102. Like that's not like an unreal number for him, just because how he shoots it, how many he shoots, and how deep he shoots it. Yep. The uh, we talked to Nick Bear, so we had Nick on, and uh-huh. uh, he talked about Drake. You kind of read my mind, bringing it up, bringing Bohannon up. He talked about how J Bo is just the teammate you want on your, on your team. Like you just oh, yeah. want, you want that guy mm-hmm. in your starting five next to you. Um, yeah. And he's just got ice water. Like, Oh yeah. Talk about that a little bit. And just like some of the, some of the ways that J Bo affects the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, I mean, it kind of, it's, <laughs> I mean, that's like kind of bad to be honest, because like, we all know, like, Oh, we're down 14 with four minutes left. All right, Jordan, go do your thing. <laughs> like, like, I kind of got to that point, like our junior year, a little bit. We're like, all right, Jordan, like, like go, go get this one for us. Uh, and like, obviously, he's, you know, he's unreal, super clutch. Um, I mean, yeah, he's definitely the guy you want, you know, in your circle. It's kind of like uh, if you guys pay attention to Big Ten at all, like basketball wise, like Geo Baker kind of had a year like that. Where like every game that they were close down the stretch, he was coming up, hitting you with a right to left crossover, step back. It was money every time. Jordan, Jordan's is uh, you know, one two dribble right, pull up, like fade, a little bit of fade on it. It's cash every time down down the stretch. I love when he fades, dude. It's so oh, yeah. it's so clean. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I, I I I'm trying to think of a guy that we played with. There's not like a clut. I feel like CJ was kind of like that um, mm-hmm. as a QB. Like in that 2015 year, CJ just seemed to always find the right guy. Um, when we were going 12 and 0. Um, it's it's nice to have one of those guys on your team. Yeah. Um, 
did he, I mean, I don't, you don't have to give away secrets, but like how tough was that when he got hurt and he had to make that decision um, to kind of like, how did that affect you guys as a team? What did you guys say to him when he had to decide if he, if he was going to redshirt or not? Um, Cause he was playing pretty decent when he, when he was playing. Yeah. I mean, I think it was just, it was really tough for me personally, just because, you know, we've been best friends for, you know, four years. Mm -hmm. um, we always envisioned, you know, having senior night together, you know, walking graduation together and doing all those things. And uh, me and him had a lot of, a lot of difficult conversations about it. Um, in the end, like, he's got to do what's best for him. And, uh, you know, for the past, you know, three years, he, he's played on one leg. Yeah. And it's not really fair to him to say, oh, yeah, play three out of your four college, like, years on, your, on one leg. And so, you know, he's going to be healthy next year. Um, who knows? He might be hyper-athletic and throwing down some dunks because he's got new hair. <laughs> That'd be wild. Uh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, no, I, I just – I wish him the best. I hope he's, you know – I know his recovery's uh, ahead of schedule and – um, you know, he'll be ready to go next year. He'll be, uh, he'll be ex exciting TV. Him and Garza together and Wee's camp if he stays. Yeah. Oh, Joe, I, yeah. oh man. Bro. He's got to stay just for that lineup. We're going to get, yeah, yeah. We're going to get to next year. Cause I, I would, I can't wait to hear your thoughts about, uh, the 2021 Hawks, but, um, let's talk 2020, man. You guys, so you just talked about how j -Bo has, you know, been playing on half a, you know, broken body for the last three years. You guys were beat up pretty much all year long, but you guys just kept finding ways to win. Just, you know, kind of talk about, like, how the fuck you guys did that when you had, like, six guys that could play some nights. <laughs> I mean, that's just – I mean, that's just a talk of, like – like, we had a super deep team. That's, that's like, our biggest asset. We had – I mean, we had – coming into the season, we had 11 dudes that could, like, really – like, were Big Ten basketball players and could really play. And so, you know, we lose four guys and we still got, we still got, you know, seven dudes that can really play, that can really, you know, you know, win you some games. And I mean, that's good enough sometimes. You just got to, you know, make sure that everyone's fresh. I mean, for, there was a good, like, two month stretch where, like, we didn't practice. We'd like, oh, yeah. We'd show up, you know, do our film breakdown, introduce, go shoot some, uh, shoot some shots, get up and down like a little bit against the scout team because like we couldn't risk anybody getting hurt. We just needed to like have a little bit of cardio and just whatever, whatever happened, happened just because we had no one. Damn. Yeah. That's, it's crazy so, sometimes when you, when you go light like that. I, I know in football, that's what happens in the later part of the season. Like mm -hmm. they back off the pads, you know, six, eight minutes get cut from practice here and there. Um, it gets colder. So you're not, you're not able to do as much and the coaches don't want you doing as much because it, at this point you don't need that uh, accumulated volume. You need quality over quantity. And sometimes it's better for a team. Uh, you know, you probably found that you guys are fresher. Um, and for those seven guys that you did have, it, it made all the difference. I, I think there was one game prep this year where we had like three guys who were like going to play practice. Well, <laughs> coach said, like, I don't, I don't need you today. I don't need you tomorrow. I just need you, like, for the game. And so, like, yeah. Like, we had, we had a few practices that were just, like, it was just weird. Like, we'd have ten guys. We'd have, like, all the scout team guys uh, and, like, two managers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's Could you incredible. imagine if the managers had to suit up for us? <laughs> they were probably oh, they praying, like, man, down. I just – I just need one guy to twist an ankle, and it's my time, coach. Dude, so funny story. Uh, Y'all remember Colin, the manager? Yeah. Yeah, he hit me up. He's like, uh, we were talking about the fitness challenge I'm doing, and then he was like, I would love to come on the podcast and talk from a manager's perspective, and I actually thought that would be, like, a decent idea. Like, the amount of work those dudes do. Oh, yeah, dude, they're, they're, they, were, they do put in more work than we do. Like, it's, they're it's there insane. all day. It's insane. I want to hear about the rusty toolbox, man. Exactly. Like here. Oh man. It's so we're going to get there. So for those listening, we might have a little manager perspective. We'll, we'll schedule that here in the near future. Um, so so now, back it up. I want, I want to talk yeah. real quick. Like, so you guys had like a rough outing versus DePaul earlier in the year. And then, you know, you know, Twitter being Twitter, like everyone's going crazy. Like, Oh, we're in for off for rough year this year. And, you know, DePaul ended up going, uh, I think they had a pretty damn good year. And you guys go on a tear and end up fifth in the Big Ten. Like, anything you want to say to the Twitter fans after the DePaul game? 
I mean, one, it was just like a wake-up call for us that we got to play every game. But two, our fan base has got to chill out, dude. It doesn't matter <laughs> no if it's kidding, basketball dude. or football. Like, like they're going to criticize us when we lose, and they're going to criticize us when we win. Like, it just never <laughs> Y'all didn't win by 20. What the fuck y'all doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys suck. You didn't cover the spread by 15 points? Like, wow. <laughs> like, like I know, like, there's a lot of guys who just, like, delete Twitter during the season because, like, they don't want to see it. But Because that's, it's so toxic, That's dude. smart. That's smart. It's so, it's but, so- like, like, I'll keep my Twitter. I don't care. Like, people can say whatever they want about me. I don't care. Like, like, they're, like the few of us that, like, keep our Twitter, like, we'll send, like, the really bad takes to each other and just, like, laugh about them. I think that's, oh, like, yeah. Kind of like what just happened with like Luca. He got robbed from AP Player of the Year. Like Rob, oh, talk about it. Let's talk about it. You know. I mean, like I don't. I just I don't get it. Like he had better numbers in a better conference. The Big Ten. Like I don't. I don't. Like the only argument you can make is they lost like four games. We lost eleven. Like, I think awesome. If we played their schedule, you know, we probably only lose two. Dude, right. I, I was on that thread, and you go over there and you see some of the Dayton. Um, just the Dayton yeah. diehards and yeah. what they what they're saying they've never seen Luca play never. and and they're like it, it's pretty clear man Obi was just better and I'm sitting there like <laughs> oh my god I can't no. I can't I honestly I honestly I don't I don't like the media awards I don't like where these dudes who never played and don't watch all the games vote on it Poor I, I hate it I like I don't like it for for anything like I don't like it when it's like uh, NFL, you know, MLB, hockey, basketball. I don't I don't care what it is. I don't I don't like when the media dudes like that are they only vote for their hometown team. They don't really do a lot of research or like know all that about it. Yeah, Keith should have won the grows up. Yeah, Keith. Oh no, he got robbed too. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, I, we're, a, we're a school of robberies, dude. I was never been robbed. Uh, th- we're owed so much financial compensation from the FBI. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, this world that we're living in right now, I let's let's get to the virus and how this has just trashed, literally life on Earth. Oh yeah. Um, maybe back up and and take us through a timeline of what you guys were hearing and kind of how it how it was, you know, presented to you, like hey be on the lookout because this might affect our season. Hey, you had to be like, there's no chance. This is canceling championship season. Like that had to just be the mindset. There's no way. I'm going to be honest. It, I don't even think it was on our radar until, until the NBA, I mean, until Rudy tested positive for it. Yep. Mm. I mean, like, like, it, like, it, like it wasn't even like a worry. Like, I think we flew out Tuesday night practice, uh, Wednesday at Butler, um, went to dinner and then like just the shit storm went off. Was, yeah. Me. Cause that Wednesday was the day that it came out. He had it right. Yeah. And this like NBA cancels and this, this is canceled. This is canceled. Like is the big 10 going to cancel? What's going to happen? And, like, like that night, uh, Hoiberg was sick and he coached the game sick. And so like, I, like I was messaging Thor, um, from, Nebraska, I was like, dude, like, what's going on? Because, like, they quarantined them in their locker room. They wouldn't let them leave. But they let Indiana leave, which was, like, the dumbest thing. Like, they just got done playing the game next to each other. Like, one yeah, one. rubbing up against each other for 60 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, I, like, I'm, like, I was messaging him on Instagram. Uh, Andy Katz had some stuff about how he went to try to go interview people. And, like, they kicked, like, they booted him. Like, the number one credential media dude in college basketball got booted. Um, that like cleared the whole arena. Like we're all sitting on pins and needles because if Hoiberg has it, like there's no way we're playing the tournament. Right. Because like they had announced that it's like no fans for the rest of the tournament. Um, and we're just like, oh my God, are we going to play? And we had a meeting with Barda uh, and Fran at, at the hotel and they're talking about all the things that are going on and all the meetings they've been in and uh, how they're pushing for us to play. And um, just, we had to, you know, expect to play. And, you know, we woke up the next day, you know, expecting to play, expecting to have a basketball game. It was just – it was absolutely nuts. I don't think us or Minnesota went to bed until, like, at least one. Because, wow. like I said, I almost went to Minnesota, so I know some of those guys. I was, like – I was on FaceTime with uh, Michael Hurt for a long time. Uh, we were sending, like, tweet like the tweets we're seeing back and forth. Um, like, their AD told them 
that Wednesday night because they had just won their first game. And then all this corona stuff starts going on. And Minnesota's AD emailed their whole team and said, if you do not feel safe, you do not have to participate. Wow. Yeah, geez. And so, like, it, it, was, it was just wild. And so – so I'm I'm curious. So you guys get the the, the notification the next day that Big Ten's canceled. Um, they hadn't canceled the March Madness tournament yet, I believe. Correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, we're like I said, we were expecting to play. I was about ready to go down to the tour like meeting room in the hotel and go get taped before we like I'm I get dressed to go uh, to the game. Actually, like Michigan and Rutgers were on the court warming up, and they pulled them off the floor. Um, yeah, no, it was super weird. Like, cause like, like I said, I was about ready to get taped, get ready to play. Then we have an emergency meeting, like, Hey, big tents are canceled. We don't know what's going to happen with March madness. And I'm telling myself like every excuse and every line in the book that we're playing, like, like, even if there's no fans, like there's still 1.3 billion in TV revenue that like the NTA needs to play for non, uh, like non-revenue sports and all this stuff. And I was like, I was trying to convince myself that we were still going to have it. And, just didn't happen. What's the so I, I want to know like what's that feel like as a senior? You know, like so us three, we we all played in a bowl game. We knew a month in advance, like okay, December twenty seventh, that's the last time we're going to play football. I mean, you you're a senior going into you know your last Big Ten tournament, followed by your last uh, NCAA tournament, but then all of a sudden, just boom, like hey, it it's there's no like closure. It's just like boom, you're done. Like what's that even feel like? I mean, there was just a lot of emotions. Like I, I knew I like immediately was just in full denial. Like there's no way. Um, and then I went to acceptance. I'm still going through the grieving stage. Like we'll see what. <laughs> um, no, but I was just I like I honestly like I just feel cheated. Like yeah, I mean like just, they took it away from us. If you really think about it and break it down, like I know I've said like oh it's a public health crisis so we gotta do what we gotta do. Like I've said that to numerous media outlets, but when you break it down, like there's, there's 64 teams. And after the first weekend, half of them are gone and you can't have, even if we play with no fans, you can't have like whatever, 1600 people, you know, go and play March madness. When the only thing that's on TV is coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Yeah. Like I I just, I don't get it, man. It's just. Was there, was there ever any talk of guys like you in your situation? You know, the, I'm still not exactly sure on the the regulations and the rules for how this is going to work out, but the baseball and softball and all the spring sports, those seniors are all supposedly getting another year now yep. uh, if they want it. Yep. Um, was there ever any talk uh, or, or stuff about that for the, for the senior basketball guys or, or that was. Yeah. Kind of just yeah there's, it's actually um, going to vote March 30th. Okay. Uh, depends on if all winter sport seniors get another year. Wow. Um, I th- uh, do you have like the email addresses of the people who vote on that committee or uh, start a right end campaign? I just, I just saw like a, a, a Twitter leak. Um, but yeah, that gets, that gets sent out March 30th, I think. Um, yeah, no, that, that'll be really interesting. Uh, obviously I was a, you know, sports rec business guy. Um, so I, I, I did case studies on NCAA all through college. Uh, I think it'll be very interesting to see how they, uh, you know, use this. And I, I assume that they're going to have some agenda behind it to, you know, say, mm-hmm. Oh, right by the student athletes, you know, just to exploit us for a couple more dollars, you know? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, what are your thoughts on the NCAA? I mean, it's crooks, huh? It's dude. It's unreal. It's like, unreal. They're so crooked. It makes it, me want to you, throw you up. Know how easy it is to like fix everything that they're like crooked about. It's just how easy it is. Very just make simple. It you can do it in a week. Literally, just free market. Everyone is by themselves. You market yourself based on your own merit. It's it's, it's, dude, it's, it ain't I hard. Dude. It's so bad. I Not think taking the, any money out of their pocket either. Right, nope. and I think I think the biggest problem that it always comes back to is it's like, oh, well, then it's going to turn into like, there's going to be recruiting issues and boosters are going to pay the kids. It's like, it's Go all ha- it's all happening already. So. Exactly. Why not level the playing field and bring everything out in the open? Because right now, you're just it's just dirtier than it would be, you know? Exactly. And that's why there's dudes with the Adidas Pro getting locked up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so that being said, this, this vote goes on. There's a chance that you, you have an, an option to come back for another year. 
what kind of mindset does that put you in? What, what, what are you thinking right now? You said you're training, you're running hills, yeah. you're trying to do as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Do you consider not even like, I, for me in that situation, I feel like you have to go back, but then like, what are the stipulations on you being in school, taking classes? Mm-hmm. It affects the entire next year of your life, which yeah. at this point, you're 23, 22, 23 years old. You're trying to plan for this adult bullshit that the three of us are a part of now. Stay in college. Yeah. And and now you get this weird option to come back for a fourth year. What's that like in your head? Yeah, no, it's, it's super weird. Like I think like, well, like the people who I think it really affects the most, like, especially with no NCAs and the whole coronavirus, the situation is guys like Luca, Wheezy, Lamar Stevens, like, I feel so bad for him. He was seven points away from breaking the school's all-time record Damn. Uh, for, for uh, points. And, like, he didn't get a play. So now if he gets one, well, is he going to go NBA or is he going to come back? Right. Just get his record, you know what I'm saying? And for I me didn't, personally, I – think I'm, about that. Like, say, like, yeah. a senior is, like, ten points away from breaking a record. Now he gets another year. Is he just going to demolish this record next year? Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but for me personally, I'm – I thought about it initially, but I'm, I'm moving on. I'm, I'm not going to take it even if it goes in the vote. I'm, I'm worrying about signing an agent right now. I'm kind of been going through the process, taking a lot of phone calls. I've uh, been on the phone probably about four to five hours every day for the past week and a half. Just wow. calls. Um, and I'll be probably headed overseas next year. That's incredible, man. Um, Congratulations on that, man. Well, I mean, it doesn't end. Yeah, so, to be to be honest, man, you uh, you claim dibs. You're a national champion. You claim dibs. You're also the valedictorian. There's really not a whole lot left for you. Here. No, I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing left to you know come back for. I mean, I've done it all. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Um, so then let's talk about next year and who will be in an Iowa Hawkeye uniform. You, you know, mentioned it earlier. It is a. I mean, it's like murderers row out there, man. It's oh, like. What are your thoughts on how the Hawks are going to fare? I mean, I've already seen projections and. Us three, you know, Kirk Ferentz is all about don't listen to the noise. Rankings don't mean shit until late in the year, all this stuff. So we're all under that kind of mindset. But, yeah. you know, they get stuff generally right. And, I, you know, I've seen Hawks in the top ten. They have a legitimate shot to win the Big Ten, compete for a national title. It yeah. all makes sense, especially if everyone comes back. What yeah. Well, I mean, I think if everybody comes back, I don't know – I don't know how you don't keep them out of the top 10. Like we were, we were a top 25 team all year long with injuries. Uh And, and like now you just get everyone healthy and back and you just, you know, you get to run it back and do it again. Um, Run it back, baby. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see how you keep them out of the top 10. I mean, we were fighting for, you know, the big 10 title about until the last, last two, last, Actually, I think it came down to last week. There was still a situation where we could have won it. Yeah. Uh, that's just that was just because the Big Ten was freakishly deep this year. I mean, there was we had eight teams ranked, and we had we were projected to have uh, ten to eleven teams into the March Madness, like right, which is ridiculous. Just absolutely freaky depth. I mean, it's supposed to be really good again next year. Um, but I mean, if you get guys like Luca, Bo, uh, Jordan, everyone to come back, like it's they're gonna be so loaded. It would be – just imagine just imagine this whole corona thing fucks up the entire world, and then next year we come back and I was like a final four team. Our team would look like the college Golden State Warriors, dude. We'd have three-point shooters everywhere. Oh, yeah. no. you, have, you could have five three-point shooters on the floor, and, like, you probably have – How do you cover that? You probably have nine guys who can start at a high major school. That's wild. That's wild. Like – like those practices are going to be insane. I was going to say, what does that do for a team behind the scenes? Like, how, I mean, just talk about how that elevates everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not like I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it has a definite advantages and disadvantages. Um, where you know your practices are going to be super intense. There's going to be great competition. If everyone stays together, it's going to get you're going to be so good. Uh, just because you get to play against a top 25 team every single day. So when you yep. play against a top 25 team, you know for real, it's it's nothing different. Mm-hmm. Um, but it definitely has its downsides uh, because whether you want to talk about it or not, there's only five guys on the court at once. There's only yep, so many yep. minutes. And, you know, you can't take national player of the year off the floor, so now there's four. And, <laughs> you know, J-Bo, who's a, you know, 
four year, now a fifth year starter, team captain about to break the Big Ten record. You may, like, how do you take him off the floor and put another guy in? You know, CJ was just a Big Ten all freshman team. Weezy's an all Big Ten guy. You just get Jack Nungy back. This is so it can be very, very frustrating if you're even number seven on that list. Uh, yeah. You, you know, guys are going to, uh, I mean, the reality is, you know, every single day is going to be a fight for playing time. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Um, anything else you guys got for Ryan before we let him go? I just want to acknowledge Kevin's wife, Beater, and how good his arms look. They are nice. Yeah, Kevin brings the juice. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> for those watching, congratulations. You got the extra special gun show. Gun show. Um, Ryan, we want to thank you so much for coming on, talking for an hour. Um, we're, I mean, it, it sucked to not see you guys be able to finish this year and, and see where the Hawks, what, what y'all could have done. But um, as you said, it's exciting uh, for you. Um, you know, you're going to have kind of, I four to five hours of phone calls a day with agents and, and talking about your future. That's clearly, um, you know, everyone knows with what you've done at Iowa and, and the hard work you put in that it's obviously going to pay off. We're excited to see where it goes for you. Um, and uh, maybe we'll bring you back on in a year right. and talk about the final four Hawkeyes. Oh yeah, let's do it. Thanks that would be time. tremendous. If, if they get deep in the tournament, we got to just have a whole meetup. You bear, whoever dude. <laughs> back to back national champs. Make the t-shirt. There we go. Back to back, baby. <laughs> Print those shirts. Sure. That's it. Um, for Ryan, Kevin and Drake, that's it for episode 103 of the Wash Up Walk-Ons. Thanks for listening again. And everybody, go have a great week. Stay safe out there. Walk-ons and don't get the coronavirus like Kluver. Yeah. <laughs>